132 years ago, local minister Russell Conwell was asked if he'd tutor his, one of his congregants in the ways of the ministry. Now, the guy had little money and little education, but Conwell agreed. And what started with two people in the minister's house quickly grew to four and then 40, moving from the house to the church basement and eventually into a building all its own. And so it was that Temple University, an institution chartered for the benefit of working women and men, was born. Well, here we are 132 years later. And despite long odds and longer hours, through parade and protest and in the footsteps of generations of night owls, I am so proud to stand here tonight and represent the working and women and men of the evening division class of 2016. Temple's motto is perseverance conquers, and nowhere is that mantra more appropriate than among this field of graduates. Now, where are my night owls at? Stand up, folks. Stand up and be recognized. Come on, God love you. Stand up, night owls. Ladies and gentlemen, the people standing before you represent the best that Temple Law School has to offer. For anyone out there looking to hire a lawyer who actually knows what real life is like, who views a 14-hour workday as the usual, well, then I have got some great recommendations for you. These people are not just, they're outstanding human beings, and they'll no doubt make outstanding attorneys, but you know, they're not just lawyers. They're parents and patent examiners. They're engineers and entrepreneurs, bandmates and board members. They're volunteers, thought leaders, artists, and perhaps most significantly, they're my friends. In fact, God forbid if I ever found myself in a jam, there's nobody I'd rather untrust with my future than a night owl. For four years, we've studied and struggled together. We've endured hardships and heartaches together. We've lost sleep over cold calls and contracts and occasionally fallen asleep in tax. For four years, we've worked through long nights and short weekends. We've missed friends' birthdays and family parties all in pursuit of this moment. And for four long years, through every moment of doubt, when we freaked out over final exams or started crying at random, you, our family and friends, you kept us grounded, you kept us focused, and you kept the faith. So for all that we celebrate here today, none of it would have been possible without your love and support. So on behalf of all of us, I say thank you. Now, that's right. Now, two years ago, a guy by the name of Lewis Katz, who is perhaps Temple's greatest alumnus, gave the commencement speech here, and he spoke about how Temple is a place that stays with you throughout your life. And he spoke about his own life, growing up as a poor kid in Camden, New Jersey, and about how an anonymous donor's gift gave him a scholarship to attend Temple, which was an opportunity that changed his life. Now, I was fortunate enough to get to know Mr. Katz during my undergraduate days here at Temple, and like everyone who knew him, I mourned when he was killed some two weeks after giving that speech. And at the memorial service that Temple held for him across the street, he was honored by just a remarkable slate of dignitaries. I mean, it was incredible. Bill Clinton was there. It was a whole thing. But what was truly remarkable was that from speaker after speaker, we heard a simple truth. And that was that people didn't love Mr. Katz because of his tremendous accomplishments or his vast fortunes or the prestige and pedigree of his friends. They loved him for the quality of his heart and for the depths of his kindness. You know, it was Russell Conwell who said that greatness consists not in holding some office. Greatness really consists in doing great deeds with little means, in achieving vast purposes from the private ranks of life. Conwell said that he who can be a blessing to the community in which he lives tonight will be great anywhere. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Lewis Katz was such a man, and I can think of no better role model for us. He was a champion for the thousands of people whose lives he touched, often for people that would never know his name. So tonight, my fellow Night Owls, I ch challenge each of us to be such a champion. Be a champion for all the children across this great land so that they may grow and prosper in an America that is more free, more just, and more inclusive. Be a champion for all the hardworking mothers and fathers out there struggling and striving to build a better life for themselves and their families. And be a champion for my LGBT brothers and sisters in places like North Carolina, Mississippi, and around the world, who despite all the debate and all the controversy and all the vitriol, just want to be treated like everybody else. Thank you. Thank you. Folks. My friends, we've all got to serve somebody, and no matter whether you're going to work for the poor or for the privileged, we've chosen to make their lives the work of our lives. And so 132 years from now, let the generations that follow us look back and remember that this class of graduates set forth from this hall in Philadelphia and joyfully took up the call of service. That these champions assembled here tonight 
set out to build an America worthy of our heritage and of our children's futures. Folks, we've shared a remarkable journey these last four years, and I'm going to cherish the memories that we've made together for about as long as I'm lucky to live. So as I head back to my seat and on with the rest of, you know, we all go on with the rest of our lives, I just want you to know that I'll be taking all of you with me. Thank you very much.